The tagline of the plugin is See Your Sound, and that's exactly what Vision 4X does. Yo, what's up producers? Joshua Casper back at you with an extra special video tutorial because today I'm gonna be walking you through the ins and outs of Vision 4X, which was made by my good friends at Excite Audio in collaboration with one of my favorite producer trios, Noisia. Now I actually had the pleasure of going out to see Noisia in their studio in the Netherlands and filming a ton of great content that they made for the Plugin Boutique channel. All of that content is already out and that's where you wanna go to figure out how to use Vision 4X in a case-by-case -case basis, whether that's shaping transients, looking at harmonics on a vocal, or getting the perfect sidechain. We've got a ton of video tutorials already for specific things. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just walk you through the ins and outs of the plugin itself to get you started before you start looking at those specific things to do with it, all right? With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this is Vision 4X here on the screen. What we have is an adjustable four main graphs that can help us make better mixing and mastering and even sound design decisions by getting visual feedback. The tagline of the plugin is see your sound and that's exactly what Vision 4X does. Over here, the big blue one is the spectrogram. We've got frequencies going from the bottom to from the low hertz from 20 and below up to 20,000 kilohertz. Then we have a bar graph, then we have a waveform, and then we have a phase correlation meter. We also have a VU meter here and then an RMS meter here. So, so much information just on the main page. This was actually made by Noisia because they have all of these meters in separate locations. Some of them are hardware, some of them are plugins. And what they wanted to do is consolidate all of that information in one easy to use, sleek looking plugin. I think they nailed it. So as I said, this is all readjustable. If I wanna focus on the waveform, I can make it huge. I can even solo it by, this will actually snap to the sides and now I can just focus on that. But if I wanna focus on maybe the bar graph, I can do the same there, same with the spectrogram and even the phase correlation meter and the RMS level and things of that nature. Really, really useful. Another cool hint here is if I am hovering over the spectrogram, I can actually zoom in to any point by using my mouse wheel. And then if I click and drag, I can go up and down in terms of frequency range. And if I go left to the right, that's gonna be in time. And you'll notice as I'm doing this that literally everything is moving at the same time. And I can do that down here. And I can even do it over here with the bar graph. It's synced to the DAW and we'll talk about how to do that. You can actually remove it if you want to, but really everything is done in real time and it really helps to get actionable information to make better decisions. You can actually see in here different things. Let me go ahead and play the song so you can see what we're actually listening to or hear rather, or a little bit of both actually. <laughs> So look at this, this is the vocal and it's actually showing you the harmonics of the vocal, it's showing you where there's a little bit of fluctuation in the pitch. And if we look over here, we can actually see what frequency range that's happening at. It's absolutely fantastic. And if we go to somewhere where there's a kick, we can actually see that in the spectrogram as well. So this is kind of like the busiest part of the track. So we're getting a lot of information here. It's essentially a heat map. As it gets brighter, it means it's louder. And as you would assume, the kick is one of the loudest parts of the track. And one of the really cool things about uh, spectrograms and, and analyzers in general is as you use them more, you'll actually start to read them like a book. So even if I had the audio muted, I could tell that this is a kick drum. I could also see that right around here, you know, we're at 90 hertz essentially, it's probably a bass because look how loud it is and how sustained it is. I mean, it's just really, really cool. And again, the more you use it, the more you'll be able to see this and uh, understand what I'm talking about. So the bar graph over here actually shows a bunch of different information, particularly as it heats up or gets highlighted, it's showing you sustained notes and resonant frequencies. <laughs> So in the lower end, that's gonna be the bass sustained. And in the higher end, anything that's peaking might be a resonant frequency, which is something we can go in and check out with an EQ to see if we like or we don't like that particular frequency range. Again, actionable information. And then in the waveform down here, we have other information at our disposal. This actually shows pitch information 
as you can see, the snares that have a lot of high-end content are gonna be super bright, while the bass, like this really low bass note, is actually grayer. So not only is it gonna show us that, but we can also just use intuition and think about dynamic range. My kick here is obviously getting crushed, but then this is actually pretty quiet. The difference in the peaks here is telling me that this probably has a really good dynamic range if we couldn't tell with just our ears. And then of course, we've got the phase correlation meter over here, and this is just gonna make sure we don't have any phase issues. In general, you're gonna wanna keep this little guy right here over to the right above zero and closer to one. That just means there's not gonna be any phase issues later on. So this track in particular is perfectly okay and there's nothing to worry about there. So that's the basics, right? That's the gist of what we're seeing here, but we can go in and really tweak this out so it gives us more information in the style that we want it presented. And we do that by clicking the advanced panel over here. Now, first of all, we can save presets. This is key. You're like, Josh, why would I need a preset for a spectrum analyzer? Well, as I said in the beginning of the video, you might wanna be mixing with this, you might wanna be mastering with this, you might, might, might want just to be looking at kick and sound design just for kicks, for example. So being able to save your parameters or how you want the information given to you is gonna be key and everything that saves time in the end when all you wanna do is be creative is a definite plus in my book. So Vision 4X actually ships with a number of presets, but of course you can save anyone that you want and you can also save something as a default. So if you're a mixing engineer and you're pretty much gonna be mixing all the time, then you might wanna just have it load up a particular set or sequence of parameters. Down from there, we've got the mode. So we've got stereo mode, left, right, mid, and side. Now again, this is key, especially for me, the mids and the sides, you being able to see those and make decisions based on that stuff. Like for example, it's pretty common knowledge that you don't want a lot of subby low end in the side channel. So what I can do here is go from stereo to side and then play that. And you might be saying, Josh, it sounded the same. And that's because if you wanna audition what you're hearing and not just see what you're hearing, you gotta click listen. So you can see here that I actually have a lot of side information around you know, 30 and 40 Hertz even. So what I would do then is throw, a, even if it's just an EQ, with mid-side capabilities on my master channel and just roll off the sides under 30 hertz, I'm already gonna get a tighter mix. Now remember, uh, it's important to make sure you're not rolling off too much because then it will just sound hollow, but you know, anything below 30 I'd say is safe just to roll off on the side portion. So not only can you do that for the sides, but you can do that for the mids or the left or the right. <laughs> Now you can also hit rotate, which will allow you to focus on the bar graph instead of the spectrogram. Just kind of flips all of the modules into a different orientation, but of course you still have the ability to completely focus on any one thing that you wanna check out. You can also check out the time overlay. You can get rid of it if you want. Let's flip it back or you can turn it on, and then you can also sync it to your DDW or not, and then you have a factor and a multiplier, so if we wanna see more, I can just click in here and pull up. And you'll notice that 55 is actually the 55th bar in the session, and as I said, it's synced to the DAW, so that's what it's telling you there. If we started back at one, you'll see that it starts at one. Spectrogram, we can even adjust the focus over here if we really wanna get in and look at harmonic details. I uh, can do that from the top as well, really get in and see as much as you want. We can also ha adjust the dB range. So if I'm looking, if I'm really looking at harmonic, strong harmonic information, and I wanna zoom in like that, now I can see things a, a lot more clearly. We also have color options, so we can change that to something more, uh, <laughs> I guess I would say traditional, I think, is what I picture red to be. There's grayscale. 
Heat map is pretty important. Again, it's gonna show you the intensity of the sound at certain points. I'm gonna leave it on Mako for now. Definitely get in there and check it out though. Now you also have three different modes here, which are transient, all around, and harmonic. So transient offers the best timing precision if you're gonna be working with percussion specifically. That's the one you might wanna choose. 4098, which is just the all around, offers the best overall analysis. And then 8192, or the harmonic mode, offers the best frequency precision. So again, it's all about what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to look at and what sort of information you're trying to get out of the plugin. I'm gonna leave it on all around for now. We also have map curves and map bias. For the bar graph, we can choose how many bars we're seeing. And again, let's flip it, rotate it, sound. <laughs> So not only can you control how many bars there are, but you can also control how quickly they react to the sound. So one millisecond, it's gonna literally do pretty much in real time, react to the incoming sound and show you what's going on. You also have peak hold, which will just, if you see this little yellow line. It's kind of showing you where the peak is. And if you want to hold that a little bit longer. So something like that will allow you to see things longer, which is something you can't really do with your ears, right? And then make decisions that way. Another really, really cool feature about this is the reference curves. So we've got acoustic, ambient, classic, d and jungle, hard, hip hop, so forth. So this is kind of like I'd say a hip hop track. So it's gonna give me the average of what would be considered a normal hip hop frequency curve. And if we go ahead and play this track again, probably where the busiest part is, we'll see how close I am. So I've used the pause button down here on the left. You can see that for example, this right here is actually above where it was or where it should be if I'm gonna really try to get into this curve. It's one of those things, again, where you could just throw an EQ on the master or find which channel is causing that overextension and just roll back on that section if you're really trying to get into the frequency curve. And obviously, um, if you're mixing an album or something, you're gonna wanna do that so it really sounds cohesive, but just a little bit over in this case, unless my ear is also telling me that there's an issue, I could easily leave that and just go, go about my day. But knowing that there's an issue there, visually, is just gonna help me make better decisions. I think I've said that like 50 times, but that's just the case. So let's reduce the bars and get more of a general idea here. Unpause it. So I could probably work on my uh, kick and my bass. I don't think it's really sidechain as much. This is a track that is in the process of being worked on. So there's a lot of room for improvement, let's say with the mix, but having those references down here are really, really great. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna allow you to add your own real soon. Don't quote me. Uh, next up, we've got the Spectrum Highlight. If we wanna just see monotone or white here, we can turn it off. Or if we wanna go chromatic and we can see things that are highlighted but just not use the color system, we can do on and then we can do map, which will just use the color system. And as I said before, the highlights in the bar graph are happening with sustained and resonant frequencies. So there's two additional parameters that we can tweak here that will say, hey, listen, it, it needs to be really sustained much longer before I wanna see a highlight, for example. Or even longer. So only really this one's lighting up right now, and that's because that says that long sustained bass note, right? So there's that, and there's also the gate or the threshold at which you'll start to allow the highlight to happen if, of course, it's passing the time threshold as well. And finally, there's a few headroom parameters. I'm gonna come back up here and rotate again. It's the same deal with the highlights. We can turn it off and it's just gonna be one solid color. Hey. 
Another really good feature is the headroom feature. So if I pull this up, what it's gonna do is show me above zero dB. Now I've got FabFilters Pro, Pro L2, the limiter on here, which has true peak limiting. This is actually a good test for any of the plugins you have that say it's true peak limiting. So if you put it at a ceiling of zero and don't leave any headroom and then turn on your pro, uh, true peak limiting feature and then run it through Vision 4X, if you've seen any red above zero, it means something fishy is going on. But as you can see here, uh, Pro L2 is doing a great job and you can even see um, that it's not going right up to zero. Uh, and then we also have the VU speed, which is the VU meters over here on the side, and we can slow those down or turn them up. And I actually think I skipped the time overlay and sync functions. I did talk about it sync to my DAW, but if you turn off overlay, you'll see that it's just gonna show me whatever I've been playing as opposed if I have overlay off, it's just gonna play uh, literally from wherever I am inside of the track, so. And then sync, obviously, we can get rid of it and then just decide in the milliseconds how long it's gonna be. And then you always have your multiplier there as well. And there you go. That's just a base intro to Vision 4X and how to start to manipulate what is available in terms of visualization to, to give you what kind of information you need. As I said, we already have over nine video tutorials with Noisia who are world renowned for how good they are at mixing. Um, they've done a bunch of specific tutorials from transients to working with vocals to the perfect sidechain. So if you're interested, definitely check out Vision 4X. And if you're looking for more information, definitely check out all of those videos. I'll link them in the video description. But as usual, this plugin is already available in Plugin Boutique. Definitely check it out. I'm Joshua Casper. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. It was only an ordinary man, but it did an extraordinary thing. From the sea to the mighty tree, stood up in front of the devil and sang. Said, no devil get out of my way. I don't care what the reaper man